In today's video, we will take a look at the P-51 fighter, its history, development and variants, how the British were involved in the development of the P-51 and how it became one of the iconic fighter aircraft of World War II. History of the North American P-51 Mustang Origins in 1938, the British government established a purchasing commission in the United States to purchase fighter planes as well as other weaponry and vehicles. Their standards were quite high at that time, only the Curtiss P-40 fighters came close to meeting the requirements. However, the Curtiss Wright plant was already working at full capacity, so they could not take orders for any more P-40 fighters. Here the North American Aviation enters the picture, who were already supplying the British with a T-6 Texan trainer plane. The president of North American, James Kinderberger, originally approached Sir Henry Self, head of the purchasing commission, to sell the B-25 medium bomber. Self proposed that NAA could manufacture P-40 fighters for the British under license. Kinderberger said that they could produce a better aircraft in shorter time than what it would take to acquire the license and setting up a P-40 production line. Here we need to take a small look at what was going on at Curtis and their development on the successor of the P-40. In 1939, Curtis was already working on their XP-46 prototype. This was the aircraft the British intended to order originally. This aircraft was meant to be the successor of the P-40, but test flights in 1941 showed no significant improvements over its successor, so the Army Air Corps decided to cancel the project and keep the P-40 upgrade program instead. Sir Harry Self was somewhat concerned that the NAA never designed a fighter before, insisting they should obtain the data on the Curtis XP-46 prototype. Some say the XP-46 was the base for the P-51 design, and from the picture it seems it had influence on the air intake and radiator placement, but North American was already well into the design phase when they acquired the XP-46 data. And with that, we can return to the P-51 story and go on with Design and Development Agreeing to Sir Henry's terms, North American acquired the Curtis XP-46 data and drawings, confirming the purchase with the Commission. They signed the commencement in May 1940, ordering 320 aircraft, with the specifications of four 7.7 .7 machine guns as armament, a maximum unit price of $40,000, and a delivery date of the first aircraft by January 1941. The team at North American, under the lead of Edgar Schmidt, designed a new plane, designated NA-73X, to be easily put into mass production, but still included several new features. One of these new features was using laminar flow airfoils and test the wings in wind tunnel to ensure the plane has as low drag as possible. The other feature, which gives the Mustang its signature looks, is the radiator and cooling arrangement. The first prototype was ready in September 1940 and made its first flight a month later. It was designed to use the Ellison V1710 engine. This engine had excellent low altitude performance, but using a single stage supercharger, the power dropped rapidly at high altitudes, above 15,000 feet. As a result, the first Mustangs delivered to the Royal Air Force were mainly used for reconnaissance and ground attack duties, as their performance made them unsuitable for high altitude combat. The first batch of Mustangs, as they were made to British order, actually used factory numbers, and instead of P-51, they were called NA-73s. The reports from RAF were positive on the Mustang's performance below 15,000 feet, and in May 1942, a Rolls-Royce test pilot named Ronald Harker suggested to fit the Merlin 61 engine in a Mustang, the same engine used in the Spitfire Mark 9. The Merlin engine had a two-speed, two-stage supercharger, giving it a much better high altitude performance. While the Ellison and Merlin engine had similar low altitude performance, the Merlin could produce 1,390 horsepower at 23,000 feet, while the Ellison only produced 1,150 horsepower at 11,800 feet. Initial test flights of the Merlin-equipped Mustang were completed in October 1942. On the American side, similar tests were carried out, combining the Mustang with the Merlin engine's license version, the Packard V1650-3. First test flights of the XP-78 prototype, then became XP-51, took place in November 1942, and the Air Force ordered 400 aircraft. The resulting aircraft, the P-51B, entered production in May 1943, and was available to the Air Force at winter. Armament 
Mustang Mark I, 4 7.7 and 4 50 caliber machine guns. P51 A, B and C, 4 50 caliber machine guns. P51 D and later, 6 50 caliber machine guns. Secondary armament, 6 or 10 rockets, 100, 250 and 500 pound bombs. Power plant and performance. Looking at the Mustang D model here, as that was the most produced. Packard V1650-7 Merlin engine, delivering 1490 horsepower or 1720 emergency horsepower. Maximum speed 440 miles an hour. Cruise speed 362 miles an hour. Store speed 100 miles an hour. Range 1650 miles. Service ceiling 41900 feet. P51 variants Prototypes NA73X or XP51 XP51B the prototype with the Merlin 61 engine P51A variant These use the Ellison V1710-81 engine with an improved supercharger and they had better mid-altitude performance than the original P51 1200 were ordered but as soon as the Merlin engine variants were available, the production was shifted to those, so only around 300 P51As were built. P51B variant These were the first models equipped with the Merlin engine, and they made the P51 a much better all-around aircraft. The Merlin powered Mustang was almost 100 miles an hour faster than the Ellison equipped one at 30,000 feet. Almost 2,000 were built from this variant. P51C variant. These are similar to the P51B but built in North American's Texas plant. Around 1750 units were produced. P51D variant. The D model is a definitive Mustang most people think about when they hear the P51 name. The D variant abandoned the Razorback design and received a true bubble canopy for better visibility and mounted six 50 cal machine guns against the earlier models four. In total, more than 8,000 were built. P51K Similar to the P51D, but equipped with different four-bladed propellers. P51H The lightweight version of the P51. This actually was a complete redesign of the aircraft. Most P51D parts are not interchangeable with the H model. About 550 were produced. A36 Grand Attack Aircraft these were similar to P-51A models using the early Ellison engines, which were not well suited for a high altitude combat, but still had great low level performance. They had added hard points for carrying bombs and dive brakes, making them more suitable for the grand attack role. 500 were built. I will explain the British RAF versions separately, as they had a major role of the P-51 development. Mustang 1 First delivered in 1941, Designation was NA-83. Production, 620 units. Mustang 1A. These were fitted with 20mm cannons. 150 was ordered, about 100 was received by the RAF. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the US Army held the remaining 55 planes, and they were fitted with 50 cals instead of the cannons. Mustang 2. When the US Army placed an order for 1200 P-51A variants in 1942, 50 of them were delivered to the RAF in place of the planes that were held back earlier. These used the Ellison V1710-81 engine with the improved supercharger and had better mid-altitude performance than earlier models. Mustang 3. These were P51B and C models equipped with the Packard-built licensed Merlin engines. Many were modified with the so-called Malcolm Hood, a sort of half-bubble canopy for improved visibility. With the Merlin engines, they could reach 470 miles an hour, and they were very good at chasing B1 flying bombs. Around 900 was delivered to the UK. Mustang 4. These were P51D models with a true bubble canopy for better visibility, and mounted six 50 cal machine guns against the earlier models 4. RAF received around 900 units. Combat history. Mustangs were operated in the United Kingdom from 1941. The first versions, mainly as ground attackers and low-level fighters, given the Ellison engine's lack of high-altitude power delivery. 
Later models fixed this problem with the Merlin engine, and with the increased speed, many Mustangs were used to intercept Weaver rockets launched at London. The last RAF Mustangs retired from service in 1947. United States use on the European theater. On the US side, the Mustang was the perfect solution for the mounting bomber losses over Europe, as the United States didn't have other fighters that could fit the role with big enough range and high altitude performance to protect the bomber formations. The P-38 and P-47 were considered, but the P-51 turned out to be perfect for this role. At the bomber formation's high altitude, the P-51 could outperform the heavier BF-110 and FW-190 fighters. Only the BF-109 had similar characteristics. By the end of the war, the Luftwaffe was so weakened that most P-51s were used as a ground attacker, though they had more losses than the sturdier P-47s, mainly because of their water-cooled engine, which was more vulnerable to enemy fire. China and the Pacific Theater The P-51s were deployed on the Far East quite late in 1944. After the capture of Iwo Jima, P-51s were stationed there, giving fighter escort to the B-29s over Japanese mainland. After World War II, the US Air Force selected the P-51 as the main fighter of its force. After a short while, it was relegated to secondary roles itself, when the P-80 and P-84 jet fighters were introduced. The designation was changed to F-51 in 1948. During the Korean War, they were mainly used for ground attack roles and suffered significant losses to enemy fire. The last P-51 retired in 1957. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.